Hey Chopsticks, on the menu today is onion rings. Now if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Merrick, nice to meet you. I film mukbangs and ASMR, so if you are interested in these types of videos, make sure to subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so I got my delicious onion rings right in front of me, along with a garlic mayo sauce. I am starving. Let's see, everyone. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's ready for some delicious onion rings, because I am. Oh, my God. I cannot wait to sink my teeth into one, you guys. Mm. Let's do this one. The one right front and center. Oh, it's the biggest one of all these onion rings. Open wide. Got it. Got it. Slay. Gonna take some of the garlic mayo sauce as well from the back. Mmm. 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 I had a very quick reaction to that. Like, I mmmed really quickly. I think I mmmed for, like, the texture and the crunch over the taste. Because as soon as I bit into this onion ring, I was like, oh my god. It is so crunchy. Mmm. And now I can taste the flavor. Mmm. Mmm. This one is stuck together. Mmm. Mmm. There's nothing like onion rings, everyone. If you're wondering how much this cost, I got this from a local restaurant. This is two orders of their onion rings. Came out to $10 Canadian, probably around $7.50 US. For the garlic mayo sauce, I made it myself. Very simple. All you do is you chop up some garlic, combine it with some mayo, take a damn spoon, and stir it up. There ain't no magic about it. Mmm, boy. Have I missed talking to you guys? Have I missed talking to you guys? Is that proper grammar? I have missed talking to you guys. Have I ever missed talking to you guys? There we go. Mm. But I'll be discussing that a little bit later on in the video. Mm. Here, let me do a quick ASMR, okay? You ready for the crunching sounds? Extreme crunch. Here we go. Oh, gotta bend over a little bit more. That's what she said. Okay, you got it? Or I mean, you're ready for the crunching sounds? Here we go. Mm. It's really crunchy. Mm. I wish I had headphones on so I can hear the crunching sounds. Mm. It's like one of my favorite ASMR triggers ever. Ever, ever, ever. Mm. I'm really hungry today as well. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the question of the day. Today's question of the day is, do you like change? Do you like change? 
Why or why not? Do you like going to a new school? Maybe you have a new job? Maybe you're moving to a new city? Do you like change? Why or why or why not? Let me know in the comments down below because I would love to read all of your responses. That's the question of the day. Hmm. Do you like change? So I'm gonna be talking about that little topic a little bit later on in that in my video. I said a little bit a lot in that sentence. I'll be talking about that later on in the video. But before we have that discussion, I just want to say that I have really, really, really missed you guys. Man, it seriously has felt like a year since I sat in front of a camera, since I have uploaded a video. Mm. But in real reality, it's only been a week and like two days, I think. I think like the difference between uploading three times a week to one video every week and a half is like, is significant. So that's why I felt like it's been forever since I've uploaded. Hmm. And if you are a regular chopstick, some chopstick of mine, you'll know why I've been so inactive on YouTube. You know what? I miss you guys so much. I think we should hug it out. Let's stand up. If you're sitting out on a chair, if you're laying on your bed, stand up. Let's have a hug. I've missed you so much. Mm. Okay, that made me feel a bit better. There's nothing like some physical, intimate contact. But seriously though, I have missed filming videos a lot. Mm. So yeah, I do want to apologize for the lack of videos. When I am finished with my new house, then I can go back to my regular upload frequency. I feel like I've been talking about the same thing over and over again in the past three videos of mine, but this channel is kind of about my life, and my life right now is all revolving around one thing, and that one thing is my new house. So I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record player to you, if I'm talking your ear off about this one thing, but that's just the biggest thing that's happening to me right now. Like for a year from now, I'll probably be talking about something else, but all my energy and my, um, and my stamina is like devoted to one single thing. So the last time where um, where we left off was I was talking about painting. Now, good news is I am almost done painting, which is amazing because it has been a month and a half since I started painting. I totally underestimated how long painting would be. I thought I would paint the entire house in a weekend. Boy, was I ever wrong. All I have left is one single closet to do. And then after painting, I feel like painting takes the longest. The other stuff on my list is a lot quicker. Like I have to buy new lighting, I have to repolish the hardwood floors, I have to physically move my stuff to my new house, that kind of things, that kind of stuff. I have to clean the vent. Doesn't that sound so adulty, like cleaning the vent? 
I never knew that vents had to be cleaned until I looked it up on Reddit and people are like, yeah, I would, or like people are like, yeah, we recommend you clean your vents before you move into your new house because you never know um, whether the past homeowners were smokers or they had a lot of pets. So there might be a lot of hair in the vents or it's just bad circulation. So I don't know how much that's going to cost. Hopefully we're talking about hundreds of dollars and not thousands of dollars because I've never cleaned a vent before. Like, I have talked about this a million times on my channel in the past, but why does school not actually teach you useful stuff? You know the Pythagoras Theorem, you don't know how to clean vents. Most people will probably have to clean vents sometime in their lives and not have to use the damn Pythagoras Theorem. I don't understand. Mm. I don't know how to change a tire. Cause school never taught me. <laughs> I feel like school should be less about like academia and just like Shakespeare or like square dancing or like bringing the chemical reaction for photosynthesis and more about life skills such as changing a tire, cleaning vents. What's another life skill that I didn't learn in school? Doing taxes. So yeah, I do have quite a bit of things on my list to do before I actually move in. My goal in terms of moving in is November. I want to be moved in uh, by November, so two to three weeks, hopefully I can do it. And then like once I move in, like once I settle down, then I can start filming two or three videos a week like I normally do. But until then, I hope you guys stick it out with me. I don't really just want to like kind of drop off from my channel, like disappear for two or three months. That's why I kind of make these videos like once a week, once every week and a half to kind of check in. To like remind you that I am still alive, I am not MIA, I have not been assassinated by some government. And it really does make my day when I see regular faces in the comment section. Like, there's um, some regular commenters on my channel that comment on every single video of mine and it makes me so happy that they haven't forgotten me even though I haven't uploaded for like a week and a half. I guess a week and a half isn't really long. <laughs> Because I know some of my favorite YouTubers, they don't upload for like half a year. And then they up they upload and I'm just like, hallelujah, you have returned to my life. What have how I've how have I been living without you? Hmm. Okay. So some people might be wondering why it has taken me so long to paint my walls in my house. Let me tell you, like, painting your house isn't just, like, taking a brush and, like, painting the wall, okay? It's a lot more than that. So I've actually written down an uh, entire process of what I do when I paint my house. So the first thing you do is, that, is, is you have to wash the wall. You have to wash the wall because you don't know, like, how clean and cleanly the last homeowners were. So you have to wash the wall. You're not just going to take some water and like scrub the wall. You take this special solvent to wash the wall. So step one is to wash the wall with this special solvent. Step two is to go over all your walls again and rinse your walls with clean water. Now I'm just saying this as like it's very casual, no big deal, but like you know like walls are like tall and you have to get up on a ladder and it's like four walls in a room and you have like five, six rooms in your house, like depending on how big your house is and how big your living room is. Like it's a lot of work. Like one step probably takes you like if you're like probably like 40, 50 hours for like one step in your entire house. So this is why it has been taking me, like has taken me a month and a half so far. So wash your walls with a solvent, rinse your walls with clean water.
Next step is to caulk. No, not that kind of caulk, like caulky in terms of filling like cracks and stuff in your walls, depending on how old your house is. I said in my previous video, if you haven't watched my previous video, link it right there. It's a good one. Uh, so like I said in that video, my house is built in the 1940s. So there's definitely some cracks in the walls. I have also spackled. If you don't know what spackling is, don't worry. I did not know this term before I was a homeowner because school never taught me what spackling is. I had to spackle and then I had to caulk the cracks. Which is basically just sealing holes and sealing cracks in the wall. You let that dry. And then you prime the wall with some primer to make sure that the paint actually sticks to the wall. Then you paint, depending on what color you're going to, usually you do three coats, maybe two coats. So each step again takes like 40 hours. So if you want to do three coats, that's another additional 40 hours on top of the second coat. And then you let it dry. So there's an eight step process. One, wash the walls with solvent. Two, rinse the walls with water. Three, caulk. Four, drive. Five, prime. Six, seven, eight, paint, paint, and paint. And what makes things even worse in my situation is the walls are actually plaster walls, not dry walls. Wait, it's called dry walls? It's called dry wood. Dry walls? Is it dry walls? I don't know. I forgot the term for it. But plaster walls are really bumpy and rough. So you have to really like use some elbow grease to push the paint so it sticks into the walls and all the like little bumps in there. Whereas like drywalls, it's very smooth and stuff. So it's like very effortless. So yeah, my house are pl like, it's made of plaster walls for some reason. I think it's because it's built in the 1940s. So because it's plaster walls, I have to put a lot more effort. It takes a lot more time because I have to go a lot slower. Is it called dry walls? I think it's called dry walls. But yeah, I hope I can finish by November. Mm. So let's move on to the discussion I mentioned previously in this video. The discussion I want to have today is, do you like change? Do you like change? I was going to do this, like the triangle symbol. If you don't know the triangle symbol in science, it like stands for change, like change in velocity, change in speed, change in mass. So I was going to be like, do you like change? That's usually like when I write notes, if I have to use the word change, I just put like the triangle signal or if I have to use the word up, I just put an up arrow instead of like writing up or down, put a down arrow instead of writing down. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> Last night, I was doing some reflection over the past year. Like, 2018 is almost over. And I realized that this year, I have undergone a lot of change in my life. Like, a lot of change. YouTube actually isn't one of them, just because I've been doing YouTube for like the past four, yeah, four years now. 
So like YouTube has been constant for me, but in other aspects of my life, I have gone through so much change. I feel like I'm breaking right now for some reason. Like, like change can either be good or bad, okay? So like, I don't want it to come off like, oh my god, I've gone through so much change and you have not. What a loser. Not my intention. I think the biggest change I've undergone this year is the whole house hunting process and home renovations. Like, I had no clue whatsoever with anything related to, like, houses and real estate, but I've learned a lot throughout the past four months. But there's some other personal stuff that I have undergone change as well in my life. I think the last time I've been through so much change was during my transition between high school and university. Other than that, I don't think anything really compares to like what I'm experiencing right now. I feel like when you become a homeowner for the first time, Usually people buy their first houses with a significant other, but because I am forever, forever alone, I don't have a significant other. So I'm kind of go through this change all by myself. Granted, my parents are helping me, but like, that's the struggles of being forever alone, buying your first house alone. Which I actually don't mind, which I prefer kind of because I don't like sharing ownership. <laughs> so to answer the question of the day, for myself, I do not like change. I just really don't like change. But at the same time, change is inevitable. It's guaranteed in life. It would just be really sad if you were the same person you are now than you were 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of evolve and, like, learn things throughout life, hopefully. <laughs> but I just simply don't like change. I just don't like it. I'm one of those people who don't like stepping outside my comfort zone and like change is literally outside your comfort zone because if it's inside your comfort zone, it's not change because I don't think anyone is really comfortable with change from an evolutionary standpoint. I think humans like predictability because it has survival value. Because it's like, oh, I know this animal is coming out in the field at 2 p.m. every day. If I get ready to kill it at 2 p.m. every day, then I have dinner so I can live on and pass on my genes to the next generation. If this animal doesn't come at 2 p.m., then I'm gonna starve and I'll die and I can't pass on my genes. So you like that predictability. You like to know that your source of food or like shelter is predictable. And when something isn't predictable, I feel like it just invokes a negative, adverse reaction inside our bodies because of evolution. Did my, like, killing the animal thing make any sense? That's my theory, at least. It makes sense, right? Like, if your source of food isn't coming at a predictable predictable pace, then you're just gonna die off, so.
I feel like there's probably 50 onion rings on here. Probably over. I feel like I've ate a lot. <laughs> hmm. So the main reason why I don't like change that I've realized over the year is because of fear. I don't like the fear of uncertainty. I hate uncertainty. Like if there's anything that involves uncertainty, I like stay away from it. I know that's really bad, right? In terms of like personal growth. I just hate uncertainty. That's why I usually don't job hop all that often. I stay in a job or like in a program until I finish it kind of. Like, I just don't like uncertainty, and with change, it's always uncertain. It's just always uncertain. It will either go great or not. It might be better than your circ it might be better than your current circumstance, or you might be worse off. And I am a risk-adverse person, so I don't like gambling, I don't like taking risks, and every change is a risk. Because, because like through that change, you might be in a better off place or a worse off place. And like I know there's a, a chance to be better off, but I would rather forgo that chance to be better off than worse off. Because like my current circumstance, my status quo isn't all that bad. Like an example would be, say you're at a job right now. And you're pretty satisfied with it. Like, it's not bad. Okay workload. Okay commute. Okay boss. Okay pay. Everything's okay. And then you hear of this job opportunity. And it might pay more. But if you take it, you might get more pressure from your boss. You might get more work. It might be a longer commute. You might just not like the company or your colleagues. So you know, like, there's a risk involved with this change. I know some people in life. They like risk, they like change, they just like need new things to come to their lives because they don't like like doing something forever with me. Like I'm okay with repetition. I'm okay with a routine. So that's why I'm kind of thinking of being like a dental hygienist. Like people who like, like I don't, they're not nurses, but like the like dental hygienists who clean your teeth before the dentist checks your teeth. I was talking to my dental hygienist and she was like, if you like routine, if you like doing the same thing over and over again, you would love this job because literally you're just doing the exact same motions on everybody's set of teeth. So, set of teeth? Is that what you call it? Set of tooth? Teeth, yeah. She's like, it's the exact same thing day in and day out. And it pays really well. I heard it's like 35, 40, maybe an hour. <clears throat> so yeah, that's like one career path I'm considering maybe if I want to change. Right now, I'm in a dilemma. Or I guess it's not right now. I feel like my entire life is a dilemma. So let me explain the dilemma to you. I feel like my life, like just me in general, my life, my opinions, my like, just a lot of things are in extremes. So one extreme on one end of the, one end of the spectrum, my life is either so boring, it's so routine, there's nothing going on. There's no change whatsoever, and I'm just like, oh, life is so boring, I'm so bored, I want to do something cool and special. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I have so much change where I get overwhelmed, I get stressed, I get worked up, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I wish there's no change in my life, I wish there's no change whatsoever, I want to go back to being boring and having nothing to do. 
So I feel like I can never find like a perfect medium in between these two extremes. <laughs> And right now, I'm on the very, very busy, lots of change in my life extreme. I, I'm sure, like, once I move into my new house, I'll be like, oh my gosh, there's nothing to do again. This is so boring. So, I'll, like, when you're on an extreme, I feel like, 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 when I'm on an extreme, I can only speak for myself. I'm never happy. But I can't find this middle ground where everything is constant and in a routine, but I'm still experiencing some minor changes occasional occasionally you know what I mean like it's hard to explain sorry In my last video, I talked about things slowing down finally. Well, I was gonna say unfortunately, I don't know, maybe it's unfortunately or not. Fortunately or maybe unfortunately, depending if you're a person who likes to keep busy or who likes to experience a lot of change in their lives. But for me, unfortunately, things are speeding back up, which I do not like. But at the same time, like I should be thankful and grateful because I got Another job interview! Yay! Kinda yay, I don't know. Um, I got another job interview at the same organization that rejected me. I applied to two positions there. I got interviewed for one position, didn't get it. Two weeks later, a different department within this organization contacted me and they asked me if I wanted to come in for an interview and I said yes. So last week I was preparing for this interview. I don't think I got it though. <laughs> Like my first interview, I would rate it a 6.5 out of 10. And this second interview I got, I would rate it a 7.5 out of 10. Like it's okay, 7.5, but not stellar, like a 9 or a 9.5. So I feel like the only way I'm gonna get this position is if some, like if all the other candidates are like way worse than me, which I highly doubt because this organization is like really big. Uh, again, it's not like Google or Apple. But I equated it to like Urban Outfitters or AT&T, just like a very big organization. So like they want like the cream of the crop, the best of the best. And with a 7.5 out of 10, that's definitely not the best out of the best. Sorry, I meant to say the best of the best. <laughs> Again, I'm like competing against people who are like 35, 40, with like a decade or two decades of experience. I always tell my close friend this, I'm like the only way I'm gonna get a job with this organization is through my personality, like through my charm. Hopefully the hiring manager likes a young, energetic, preppy colleague. Cause like, if you're just evaluating me on skills and experience and like merit, mm, I highly doubt I'm gonna get the job. But hopefully like you're willing to train me, you're willing to teach me, you're willing to mentor me because you see potential in me, you like my personality, I'm easy to get along with day to day because you're going to be spending 40 hours a week with whoever gets hired in this position. So would you rather be spending it with me, someone who's chatty and like just friendly, or spending it with someone who has a lot of experience and skills and expertise, but is just a biatch. But there are people who have like lots of skills, experience, expertise, who are just as friendly 
as me, so that's why I don't think I'm gonna get the job. My friend is always like, Merrick, you think so negatively. You're such a pessimist. You can't go into your job interviews pretending, like, not pretending. You can't go into your job interviews already thinking you don't have a job. I don't know. Like, I'm just, like, a very realistic person. Like, I know who I'm, like, who my competition is. Like, this is an extreme example. But it's, like, applying to be the CEO of Microsoft, right? And it's, like, you don't even know how to code. It's, like, what are your chances of, like, being the CEO of Microsoft when you don't know how to code? It's, like, people are telling you to, like, think positive for your Microsoft CEO interview, even though you don't know how to code. I'm just, like, what is this fake positivity? What is this fake optimism? Why are people saying this to me? That's kind of how I felt going into this interview, but I do know why people say that. It's because they don't know what else to say. It's not like, like, they can't be like, oh, why did you apply for that? You're not even qualified. Like, that's a bad friend. Like, they're gonna be like, oh, you should think positive, blah, blah, blah. I don't think there's an appropriate response, but I don't have a solution. I'm just saying, like, how I felt, my feelings, my emotions. Could you imagine if I actually got that job? Like, oh my gosh, starting a new job. That's so much change on top of how much change I'm experiencing right now with my new house. I feel like I sound like I'm complaining. I'm not. It's like, I don't know. It's like I signed up for this. Like if I didn't want the job, why would I apply in the first place? Ideally, in my perfect world, I would have finished experiencing all the change that is associated with my house. And then, so and then, like, move on to the change associated with the new job. So I don't want two massive changes at once. I want to finish one change and then move on to the next change. But we all know life does not work like that. Ooh, this is a really big one. Oops, sorry for the clay noise. Just gonna get some dip and share this onion ring with you. Open wide, slay. Mm. So yeah, am I pessimistic? I like to think I'm a realist. <laughs> like, if I was pessimistic, I would be like, there's no way I'm going to get this job. There's just no possible way. Realistic is more like, that's what a pessimist would say. Like, a pessimist would be like, no way am I getting this job. Whereas a realist is like, there's probably a very high chance I will not get the job. I might get the job if all the applic other applicants are worse off than me, but the chances of the other applicants being worse off than me are very slim because this is a very prestigious or organization. And I'm the realist, and the optimist would be like, I'm going to try my best and I will probably get the job, I don't know. Just optimism is just like not a part of my soul, okay? That's all I can say. So I can't even describe how an optimist would react to this circumstance. Hmm. So yeah, that's why I like to say I'm a realist. Am I a realist? I don't know. You should let me know. After my little monologue there, you should let me know. Am I a realist or am I just a pessimist? Hmm. 
I feel like pessimism or just like a pessimist is like always viewed negatively in our society. I don't know why. I feel like like optimism sometimes should be viewed negatively. It's like you're so out of tune with reality. I don't think it's fair. I think there are both like there are both equal amounts of pros and cons to being a pessimist and an optimist. But society seems to always just view opt optimism with like just pros and pessimism with just cons. Last onion ring. Mm. Definitely more than 50 onion rings on here. I'm gonna guess more like 80. Mm. Mm. That was such a delicious meal. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. If you're not subscribed yet, if you are subscribed, make sure, sh make sure to turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. I love you so much chopsticks and remember to slay your day.